four dollars in your Bronco Sport can have turbo sounds. Hey guys, I'm Dustin with Hard Cruise Racing. Today we're gonna be doing something stupid. Well, I already did something stupid, but I need to go get a part to finish it. So I guess, uh, yeah, get in, let's go for a ride. Hmm? Real quick, when you close these hoods, there's a double latch. And she pushed down on it. I've heard stories of people's hoods coming open when they, uh, they leave dealerships and stuff. It'll absolutely come all the way back and shatter your windshield need to go grab a part to finish doing something stupid with my Bronco Sport but uh long story short yeah a little turbo blow off so pretty much every turbo setup out there including the EcoBoost they need a way to relieve that pressure when you let off the gas so I don't know how much boost the uh the new Bronco Sport is is pushing stock I'll look it up but uh in the turbo you have two different valves all right guys, so I'm sitting here and I'm editing the video. I'm, I'm trying to get this video posted for you guys. And I actually noticed that I said something backwards. So in the video, I specifically say, there are two valves in the turbo and they're often confused or you said wrong or whatever. And then I said them wrong. So <laughs> in your turbo, there are two valves. One of them is what's called the blow off valve or the bypass valve. And what this does is it relieves the pressure from the turbo. The second one's what's called the wastegate. And the wastegate controls how much boost maximum the turbo can, can build, okay? As the exhaust gases rotate the turbine and spin the turbo up to then build pressure on the other side of the turbo, the wastegate is what cuts off the max pressure. So there's a spring inside of there, and then you could have that set to like 15 PSI or 17 PSI, which is what I believe the Bronco Sport's at. That's what Ford's 2.0 EcoBoost engines are designed to build to. And then once it gets to that pressure or that spring tension pressure, uh, it allows the re remainder of the exhaust gases to bypass the turbo and not spin any faster. The blow-off valve or the bypass valve or whatever it's called in a sense, uh, it relieves the pressure when you let off the gas. Okay, so when you're building pressure, you know, it's gonna spin it up, and then when you let go, the, you know, there's still continuous gases trying to build pressure, but you don't necessarily want those blowing into your engine. So then the blow off valve relieves that pressure and it's going to, to send it back up into your intake and kind of do like a recirculation up until you either, either start to build boost or that, that boost kind of uh, deteriorates because the intake tubing before the turbo is larger than the intake tubing after the turbo to build pressure. So yeah, I better go put this video in there because I said it wrong. Now these two get confused often, okay? Now there's a few different setups out there that you can use to get this whoosh sound. In most cases, it's like an $80 part that goes in there that just has a little opening on the side. So when the pressure's reliefed back to your intake, it's pretty much clog clogging off that intake uh, tube, and then it's pushed out the sides, and you get your spinny whoosh sound. But you don't really need that because you already have the component in your car to do it. What you just need to do is, uh, well, disconnect the hose and clog off, or plug off the intake hole. Now you need to plug off that extra little intake port because you'll have excess air that isn't being measured by, by your different monitors uh, going into the intake and it's just a hole where something could fall into there. A leaf or, you know, just any, you know, random part. So you really need to plug that off. God, I love this. Uh, you really need to plug that off. I think it's an inch wide or inch diameter plug. I'm gonna go check right now. Um, but you just need to plug that off some way, shape, or form. Generally, there's not a lot of pressure there, but if you wanna put a zip tie or some kind of twisty tie or you know any kind of little tightening device on there, you're better off. It is plastic, so don't crank down on it. Um, but other than that, the soup is coming from the bypass valve and into the atmosphere, doesn't really need anything on it. Okay, you don't really need to cover that up because it's pressure. It's, you know, it's blowing out, it's not pulling in, and uh, there's nothing that really can go down. But if you listen, you know, we do have a nice boost sound. Um, and again, the higher RPM or the more load you add to the engine, the more you're gonna get that. So I'll try to open the window and not get a bunch of air sound, but you know, it is a nice, a nice swoosh. 
If you go uphill, you're gonna have a, a louder sound. If you add more pressure, you're gonna have a louder sound. In a manual car, generally what we do is we, we upshift or you know you go to a higher gear where you're not getting as much torque. And then when you hit the gas, uh, you, you end up with a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, resistance, and you get a ton of it. Oh, it sounds good. All right. So let's go grab that part. We're going to put it on there and then I'll show you what I took off and how easy this is for you to do at home. Guys, this is really easy. Don't overthink it. Again, there's parts out there. People are trying to sell all sorts of components and you don't need them. You don't need this $80, you know, uh, bypass valve opening or whatever they're trying to call it. You don't need that. You literally need a pair of pliers in, in about five minutes of your time and one of these plugs, which is going to cost a couple bucks. On buying these steel hose clamps, make sure you get like quite a bit oversized. Uh, before I needed to like do like an inch piece, and I think I grabbed like inch and a quarter or something like that, and you weren't able to slide it on to start tightening it down easily. Okay, so if you're gonna get something like this, like I said, I think we need an inch and an inch rubber cap. So I think we're gonna go three quarter to an inch and three quarter, which are gonna give us you know the uh, notches all the way around it. You know some of these like uh, well, let's find some. Let's let's look quick. Okay, some of these are only going to give you the notches part way around right here. See where they have the steel band? Now, this isn't an issue because this one has quite a wide grip, but some of these don't. Um, okay, so also, you know, I'm grabbing stainless steel, which is why it's more expensive. You don't need stainless steel. If you wanted to grab a steel hose clamp, grab a steel hose clamp. I'm just getting stainless for, you know, so it doesn't rust. I never have an issue with it again. So I'm thinking this three quarter end cap might work. We're also going to grab an inch end cap. These are hard plastic though, so we're going to look for the rubber ones. They're claiming that they don't have the rubber ones here. Um, so I'm going to keep looking. The other thing that I've seen that might work is uh, it's like the rubber chair bottoms, those caps. I can get four of those for like, for like three or four bucks. But I don't want four of them, I want one. <laughs> so I'm going to keep looking for rubber end caps and then if anything we'll, we'll try to hunt those, those chair caps down. But you know, I'm just looking for caps. But I want to be able to tighten it down. So that's a dilemma. The nice part with these is we might be able to put a little slit in the side, still tighten them down, but let's just keep looking. All right, so one place you need to look is the fastener department, okay, over here in furniture parts. You know, these right here are marked uh, 7 8 the biggest ones they have in the drawer. Now, one thing I will say this is marked 7 8 this is marked 3 quarter, and my 7 8 is fitting inside my 3 quarter. So I'm not really sure what's being measured here. You know, it's something I would have to check. But clearly, you know, uh, something me something measurement-wise is messed up here. These are very rubbery, and they're a dollar ninety-eight. So I might try those. That's not Bay Twelve. The map lied to me. I was walking up and down these. I was looking. The map lied to me. So the other thing that I heard a lot of people using is these caps. So I might grab a set of those and see if those work. Let me find what well, what size has we got. This is inch and an eighth. We can probably get inch and an eighth to tighten down. You say seven eighths. I think seven eighths is the other ones that I have in my hand already. So we might go with inch and an eighth unless we find an inch. See if we can tighten those down if that's the right size. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so we're just gonna pop that cap back on while we're here so that way we can take all the ones we didn't need back in there. So the hose we took off is this one right here. See it? And we need to cap this back off. So again, this is your uh, bypass return that goes back into your intake. So right now, all that sound is coming out of here. Now, if you really wanted to, you could put an extension on there. Just get a cap on it, or cap with an extension, and then run it wherever you want it. Run it out the side, run it out the hood. I know people that run them up into here. Not necessarily in this vehicle, but in other vehicles you uh, make that sound much louder once you get it out of the engine bay because this is all sound deadening up here, sound deadening in the back. So you can make it much, much louder. So I'm gonna check this the cap size back here and let you know what I end up using. All right, so we did end up going with a one and one eighth inch chair cap. And if it's very, very tight, it's very hard to get back there. Uh, you gotta really push it on. Uh, be careful of this, it's very sharp. As you can see the top of my hand, but uh, got that on there. So we're gonna go return the rest of this. Throw these inside. Return everything else. And let's uh, see how it sounds quick before we leave the parking lot. Mm -hmm. 
Now again, this gets louder over over uh, resistance. So when you're driving uphill, if you're uh, really getting into it, it's going to be much louder. There you go. That's your four dollar <laughs> turbo blow off sound noises. Now I did pop the intake off earlier to see how it would sound with uh, ultimately with a different intake on it. And it was a little bit, I mean, you get a little bit of sound out of it. It's nothing terrible, it's nothing amazing, but you do get a little bit of more noise out of it. And then uh, we might be putting an exhaust on this pretty soon, or an, at least an electrical or mechanical cutoff for the exhaust to get that good sound out of it. So there you go, $4 in your Bronco Sport can have turbo sounds. Saying hi. All right, guys, so I waited probably a week and a half before I did the conclusion of my video because I really wanted to make sure that there was absolutely no uh, engine codes whatsoever that came up um, or anything of that manner. Now, I knew that there shouldn't have been. I was very, very confident that there shouldn't have been, um, but I just wanted to make sure, okay, because I don't want to tell you guys to go do something and then, you know, a, a trouble code pops and you can't check it. I mean, you can to a point. You can buy little scan tools to check some of those codes, but they're very vague, and they're they're very different from what you get when you work inside of a dealership or at a shop as far as bi-directional scan tools. They're very different, okay? Um, not that I want to go too far into it, but don't believe those little comments that says, you'll never need a mechanic again, because they just, they, they pass, uh, or what they show you is a very vague code, and it doesn't tell you what in that system is actually wrong. So, um, yeah, unless you know how to test components, you would still be kind of lost. You'd have an idea, but I didn't want to cause something that would ultimately lead to a trouble code or something like that because I don't want you guys to panic. So, no, there are no trouble codes that have popped for the vehicle. Um, I've gone hundreds of miles since we did the swap. We've gone kayaking and we've gone on to you know like an hour and a half to two hour drive to some food trucks and drives through the mountains and all sorts of stuff okay that's what we do we travel every weekend hi <laughs> so i'm dustin with hard cruise racing uh do me a favor and hit that subscribe button okay I, i'm trying to do a lot more uh fun and educational content when it comes to the bronco sport but all things in general okay if you follow our channel you know we do custom bikes custom cars uh we do racing we do all sorts of cool things so give me that subscribe now that you watch my video youtube will already get show you my upcoming videos the subscribe helps me that's what it comes down to um, so give me that subscribe, help me out here. Um, comment with whatever you want to see next, okay? I talked about possibly doing an exhaust on here. I'm not sure yet because we don't know if we want it to be loud when we're trying to travel. The quiet is kind of nice and everything else we own, it has an exhaust on it. But we might do something different. Something you guys don't normally see in, with uh, newer vehicles, something like an electric cutoff, which will open or close. It'll It's pretty much a three-way one coming in, two going out, and then it'll switch between where it wants to send the exhaust. So I can have a performance exhaust and have the stock or a much quieter exhaust as well. Might do something like that. I'm really thinking about it. Um, but if you have any questions, be sure to comment. If you do cool things, go on trips, or want to show me something cool, tag me in it and hashtag HC racing or on any platform really okay you type in um, hard cruise racing on on any platform and, and it'll pop up and you'll see us and uh, if you see us out and about say hi yeah I got three more of those cut those blockers if you're around Ohio and you see us I'll keep them in the car and you can have one because I don't have a use for three more of them so you can have it for free to go do the same thing to your vehicle so uh, ultimately, have fun, have a good day, build cool things, and get off your phone because look at all this nature around us. Like, like I live out here in like a naturey area, like surrounded by woods and stuff. You don't get to enjoy that if you're sitting on your computer, sitting on your phone, sitting in front of the TV, wherever you're watching YouTube. I want you to see my videos, but I also want you to get out there and have fun. Most importantly, have fun and uh, have a good day. Thank you.